What's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It is Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update slash rumor video, I guess you could say. I'm um, not sure what to call this one because I'm going to be covering two topics uh, that are semi related to each other. One of them being Brian Flores. And I think the real reason, at least in my opinion, the more important reason why hiring him could end up being a problem. And that's not just for Brian Flores. It's kind of just that he's like one of two final candidates that a lot of Giants fans, including myself, think is going to end up being the head coach of this team in the future. Uh, but it goes for any defensive head coach specifically, the problem that I'm about to list for you guys. So you know it's not, you know, like something with Brian Flores himself. It's just the fact that he's a defensive coach. And let me save that for when I get into it. And the other one is going to be with Joe Shane, the New York Giants' new general manager, and John Mara, because, well, from his opening press conference, you know, there was something, there was just a question he was asked, and I hope he answered it differently. And that compounded on the fact with how John Mara responded to a question, it was either earlier on or later on, kind of makes me a bit worried. And I'm not telling anybody to panic or anything like that. I'm just saying, keep your eye on a situation. But let's talk about Brian Flores first. I know I sounded very cryptic. And very um very confusing and vague there but I promise I promise wait and you'll you'll definitely get to hear and hopefully see what I'm saying so the thing with Brian Flores we all know about his reports coming out of Miami I guess is the word I'll use not necessarily his uh, behavior or the way he conducted business down there or anything more so just about his reports down in Miami that came out right after he got let go I've said it several times I made a video last week where I said that Brian Flores would be the perfect match as a head coach for the Giants. And I still think that he could be a really, really good head coach for the G-Men in the future. Then those reports came out and it definitely made me second guess. Definitely, definitely made me want to go back and think a little bit more about what I'm saying here. Because a lot of the things, you know, specifically communication with his own staff, communication with his players... Um, running through offensive coordinators I think he went through three or four in his time there not even being able to find a good offensive coordinator around that offense down in Miami and just the way he guess I carried I guess he carried about business um in almost like an iron fist dictator type of way oh my god I, I know y'all know the new green screen obviously and my fingers just disappeared for a second let me know what you guys think I'm still working on it might need to invest in a, a better actual green screen so that my fingers don't disappear and whatnot uh, but yeah we know about those reports this vid and my concern kind of has nothing to do with that because i do believe that a coach with a second chance can sort of correct their mistakes from their first outing as a head coach we've saw it and a lot of people are not going to like this example but it's true we saw it with tom coughlin tom coughlin from the jaguars it back in like the early 2000s had very, very, very similar things said about him as a defensive head coach that kind of ruled like a dictator a little bit. He had very similar things said about him before he came to the Giants. And of course, he changed his way with the Giants. It's a very famous story. It's one of the main reasons we even went on a Super Bowl run in 07 to 08 is because he changed his approach to players and his staff. He was a bit more open, not necessarily soft, but not as hard as he used to be. Pause on that <laughs> with uh how he went about his business so i do think yeah brian flores should he come to the giants i think it would be stupid of him to continue that very hard mentality or, or that very soldier like you know just you guys get the idea he would I, or at least i hope he would change so that's why it's not about that what it is about is the offensive coordinator market right now in my opinion there's a way better market out there for defensive coordinators if an offensive head coach was hired and uh the thing is there is only just one offensive coordinator out on the market or one coach out there that has offensive coordinator experience 
out on the market. And that's Brian Dable. And he's not interviewing for offensive coordinator positions. He's not making a lateral move, side to side move. He's making a vertical move, climbing the ladder, trying to get a job as a head coach. Every other offensive coordinator candidate out there, with the exception of um two well with the exception of joe brady i'd say but i haven't seen his name thrown around at all so i'm gonna eliminate him from this because you would think he would be somebody you would hear about in a lot of offensive coordinator jobs uh so i'll throw joe Gr- joe brady out but with the exception of pep hamilton who hasn't been an offensive coordinator either since i can't remember if, if he was a coordinator for the chargers in 2020 i think he might have just been a qb coach and, and if that is true, he hasn't been an offensive coordinator since, what is it, the Colts, which is quite some time ago. Every other offensive coach out there that is interviewing for a coordinator position or that is you know, presumed to be interviewing for a coordinator position are position coaches, specifically quarterback coaches, guys that haven't had any experience being an offensive coordinator before, right? So you're taking a mighty risk if you're going to hire a defensive head coach and then you're going to have to go out and find an offensive coordinator you're taking a risk um as opposed to if you hire brian dable who once again is basically the only coordinator on the market but he's making that jump he's not going side to side if you were to hire an offensive head coach your defensive head coach or your defensive i'm um, sorry your defensive coordinator options are a lot better than your offensive coordinator options uh you look at the defensive coordinator list you got guys out there that have tons of experience and have been some of the best defensive coordinators over the past couple of years in the NFL. Vic Vangio and then Vic Vangio since about 2012, he's been one of the best defensive coordinators in the NFL. You have obviously uh, Don Wink Martindale. You have guys that may make lateral moves. And, um, at least, at least some reports suggest they would be willing to make a lateral move, like uh, Raheem Morris from the Rams. Uh, and I think it was D'Amico Ryans from the 49ers. Although, I'll be honest with you, D'Amico Ryans would be smart if that man just stayed. Uh, he just stayed over there with the 49ers and could do his job. But it's not It's not a big list either. I know. It's two, but it's two greater than zero. Two of those guys versus zero of anybody with experience on the offensive side of the ball. And I guess that just kind of goes to show... How this coaching search in 2022 in general across the board from head coach to coordinator to uh, defensive coordinator, it's going to be one of those, do we call it classes, a coaching class? It's one of those coaching classes where you're going to be taking a lot of risks with whoever you hire. Uh, there's not a lot of proven guys out there right now. Um, and even though it's just two, two is still greater than zero, that uh, that that proposition of hiring an offensive head coach and then getting a, a proven defensive coordinator, I think, in my opinion, is a bit more sweet than hiring a defensive head coach and taking a chance on an offensive coordinator that's going to be like his first time ever conducting an offense, taking care of an offense, developing the players like that, just overseeing everything on that side of the ball, which I feel like we should all agree as Giants fans, the offensive coordinator position should be a really, really important one right now. I would put it as the third most important thing we need to get right with our new hires. Of course, the first one being Joe Shane, the general manager, the second one being the head coach, and then the offensive coordinator position is right there after it because our defense, for the most part, is built. So just get a good coach that, you know, could run it. But our offense needs to be built before we could say get a good coach to run it. So we need a good developer out there, a good teacher to help build that. And I'm not sure if I would be willing to give that to somebody that's never done it before. Right. So that's what I'll say about that. And then now switching to the Joe Shane thing, what I was referring to earlier was he was asked if he has full control over the head coaching search or do the Maris still have some say in it, which was a very direct question by the media. I'm paraphrasing here. But when he responded, he basically I wanted a yes answer. I wanted him to say, yes, I have full control because that's what they've been telling us. Right. They've been telling us the new general manager is going to have carte blanche or however you pronounce it, but a blank slate. He could do whatever he want. He answered, it's a collaborative effort. And I was like, all right, yeah, you know, okay, fine, I guess. It's not terrible. But then in addition to that, you know, there was a quote by Jordan Renan that that when you you put the fact that uh, our general manager said it's a collaborative effort on top of this quote, on top of this quote, you're kind of like, all right, are the Maris even stepping back at all? And I'll just read this word for word. 
he says Joe Ronan says concerned. He asked John Mara if Joe Shane has more say than previous GMs on head coach hirings. And then Mara responded, no, I don't think so. Our system has always been the same. We rely on the general manager. We rely on his advice. But at the end of the day, ownership has to approve it. And Renan ends off his little tweet with, so nothing has changed. And I have to agree a little bit here because that's the opposite of what you were telling us just last week. The That's the complete opposite of what you were saying to us, Mr. John Mara. When you're talking about getting a general manager in here, that's actually going to be able to do their job to the fullest. That's not, not at all what I expected, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm just putting this out there once again, not telling anybody to hit the panic button. But it really does seem a, a little bit fishy that we're getting very collaborative answers instead of getting what we should get, which is a general manager that is allowed to do his job without any interference from ownership. That has been a problem for a while. There's a little bit more, um, a couple more things that kind of factor into this as well. I'm not going to get too much into it. But if you think about the head, not the head coach, the um, the general manager search in general, uh, in general, that sounds funny. You know, th there's a lot of things out there that suggest they've been talking to Joe Shane for a while, even through the season. And those reports are not confirmed, which is why I'm going to say take this with a grain of salt. But if, they, if they've been talking through, to him throughout the season or they've had contact with him for a while or they had him as the ideal general manager for a while... What does that suggest about the actual general manager search? Does that mean a couple of those things were a farce that, you know, they just interviewed other guys to make it seem like we did a good search, which if that's the case, they bamboozled all of us. And if that's the case, that means Jesus Christ, you guys did a 2018 again. I'm just putting it out there. I hope that it's completely false and I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong, but I really want it to not be a collaborative effort. I'm sorry, John Mara. I don't want you involved in the head coaching search at all, bro. Get out of there. Go sit down in a corner. Let the GM do his job. That's just me. That's it for today. Guys, put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.